believers, listen. Too often in daily life, we, I said we because I, I used to do it also. It's something I need to have to be reformed into also to be more Christ-centered. Too often we become frustrated when our prayers are not working out the way we expect them to. Okay, let me give an example. Let's say that I'm, I'm sketching a, a, a situation now. Let's say you are a Mexican guy, okay? And you live in a country where there is white supremacist violence going on. And you don't want to become the target of white supremacist violence. So you think, you know what? I want to start my own business. I want to have my own streams of income so that I don't need a nine to five. So that when they begin to discriminate or they begin to act racial on the, on the workforce, I can leave. So you don't want to be able, you don't want to have to compensate at a job interview just to be accepted. You don't want to be, go through all of that, and you don't want your family to go through it either. So you begin to pray, decree, and declare. And when, while you're praying, decree, and declaring in fasting, you also are making steps. So you register your own business, you build your own website, so you are active. You're, you're not saying, "Lord, please give me my own business," and you're sleeping uh, on your behind, and for some reason you expect magically things to fall out of heaven. No, you're active on the earth. You are designed to be active in the earth realm. You are designed to govern the earth as a human being. So, according to your design, how God created you, you're active. So you are operating in obedience. You're praying, decreeing, and declaring. You are self-reflecting, and you're active out there. And you're not selfish. You're not some narcissistic uh, prick that just wants to uh, get stuff from other people. So you're, you're not into scamming others just to get uh, cash flow. You want to truly and genuinely give value to other people's lives and you want it to benefit you too in return, you and your family. There's nothing wrong with you, okay? There's nothing wrong with you. It's not doing anything wrong. But for some reason, it just doesn't happen. You know as a believer that you will face affiliation. You know that. So you begin to think, okay, maybe an affiliation I mean, in country. You have the bank that, that tried to uh, shut you down and suddenly the bank left you alone. Uh, you, there were neighbors and people that began to murmur against you, and that stopped after a while. After things backfired on them, so you see that uh, the anointing is working, that the violence is shut down, but still, you have to do a part-time work. And your dream to see your relatives, see you and your family, completely debt-free and completely and financially dominant, it just doesn't work out. And you're thinking, what am I doing wrong? How come that in the Bible the faith of one? Uh, uh, benefited many, and now I have faith also. I'm also on the new covenant in the New Testament, and it is as if I'm I'm praying for none. It's as if I'm um, talking to a wall. It is, you become first you think, Lord, what the heck's going on? What am I doing wrong? Now listen to me. What's going on is as follows: Your prayers, decrees, and declarations are Christ-centered, because God wants you to be prosperous and wealthy to magnify Him on the earth. That's true in the here and now. Okay, and God wants you to benefit others with your wealth and your prosperity. That's Christ-centered also. And you want to add value to your community. That's Christ-centered. That, that's all good. So it's not you. This is what's going on. You are, in the example I'm, I'm giving, you are a Mexican guy. Okay, and there is racism against the Mexicans in the country where you live. That means there's denial going on about the situation. That means that Mexicans are being gaslighted, that they are that they are racially discriminated against. And you have Mexicans who see this, but they kiss us off white supreme society just so that they will, will uh, get some ease. And those type of Mexicans are what we in the black community would call coons, and they are gaslighting the rest of the Mexican population uh, who's going through all of the, those extra difficulties. If your prayer worked out, if your decreased declaration worked out the way you want it, you and your relatives would have become financially dominant, but here's the thing. You would be used by the white supreme society as a cover-up to gaslight the rest of the Mexican uh, population and the, re and the rest of minorities in the country. So without you consenting to it, you would become the propaganda tool to gaslight many others and to keep others in darkness and in danger. But you didn't see this coming. You were not thinking that way. You don't, were not thinking that far. Again, there's not no fault on your part. You just don't see everything. You don't notice everything. Even when you look at the bigger picture, there are things in, in the bigger picture that you'll notice directly. 
Holy Spirit sees all potential outcomes, all potential consequences. So when you were praying and declaring, the Holy Spirit was just redirecting your prayers and redirecting uh, your desires to a better outcome in which you cannot be exploited nor misused as a propaganda tool against your own people. Now, that's just an example I'm giving you. Okay? Well, let me give another example. Let's say that um, you, well, or you, let's say you have a son, okay? And you are praying for your son for deliverance. And you want your son to be financially free. You want them to be, um, you know, after to go smooth and easy for him. But then, the more you pray for your son, the more difficult your son gets. Now your son is arrested from time to time. And you're thinking, Lord, am I, am I, am I praying wrong? Or uh, uh, is there something else going on? No, this was going on. When you were praying for your son, your intention was for your son to be safe. Because you didn't want your son to be uh, uh, end up in a hospital. You didn't want him to end up dying, uh, go to violence in the streets. Or you didn't want him to get involved with the wrong crowd. So your intention was the safety of your son, which is good. So when you decreed and declared safety on your son, that decree and declare was powered by the anointing immediately and all, uh, all doors in your son's life that would bring him in danger were shut down. So suddenly his girlfriend left him out of the blue. And he was devastated, thinking, why did she leave me? What did I do wrong? No, your son didn't do anything wrong, but that woman wasn't good for him. She was only bringing negative attention to him, which would cause him to get into a fight sooner or later. So when you prayed on behalf of your son, when you began to decree and declare safety for your son, uh, that door was shut down. Then, your son was arrested a few times, even though he was not the one they were looking for. Some guy broke in. He looked like the guy that broke in, so they arrested him and put him in, in jail. It happened a few times. But because he was in jail... Some of the folks in the streets who wanted to stab him couldn't find him because he was in jail already. So they thought he just gave up. So the, so the white supremacist error, or whatever error it was with the police force that they couldn't uh, uh, capture the right guy, it was bent over in the favor of your son, though you praise the priests and decorations. Okay? So the fact that your son's difficulties increased... That was an outworking of your prayers and Christian declarations, but not in the way you expected it. And that's what we need to learn as believers. Just because things don't work out the way we expect them to doesn't mean that things aren't working out in our best interest. Okay? Because some of the things we consider our best interests are really our doom. Okay? For example, some people want to become completely anonymous and nobody knows anything about them. Now, when nobody knows anything about you and you need some help, I'm sorry, but... How can, you, how, can you, how can you blame people for not helping you? They didn't even know that you're there. If you're completely anonymous, you're going to become a target easily of predators. If you at least are in contact, and if, if you at least are known by some people, then predators are more watchful because they realize, okay, if I mess around with this individual, um, others may notice it and I may, may be in trouble. But if you're completely anonymous, nobody knows anything about you, you're in trouble. Don't you know that there are work links like that? They want complete anonymity. They delete social media. They just want to be left alone completely. They only deal with three or four people in their lives. They become predictable because they're only involved with two, three, or four people. And because of that, they are so predictable. If someone wants to kidnap them or rob them or do something to them, they just have to wait them to operate in a cycle. And, yeah, they're gone. Okay, so this complete anonymity thing that a lot of people desire is not in their best interest. Okay, some people want to have fame. Now, fame, we, we know that fame is not in your best interest. Because in this world, when you have fame, people want something from you. And if you can't give them what they want, they'll turn on you. So actually, you're under a threat. So sometimes the things we want, we want because we think they are beneficial to us, but they're not beneficial at all. They are not. So, that's why we need to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing implies that you keep on praying, even if you don't get what you want the way you wanted it. You have to begin to think, oh, a minute, I've prayed for this, but it didn't happen. You know what? Maybe there's something better. Don't think, oh, I did something wrong. No, that's self-condemnation. That is a negative, filthy, uh, self sabotaging way of thinking that the world gave to you. you need to, that's why when you keep on praying and things don't work out the way you want, it is for you to reflect on your thinking and to redirect your thinking to be sent around Christ. The hope of all glory. Okay? So if you have the hope of all glory, why are you upset? 
if things didn't work out we expected because we expected may not may, may not have been the best way and sometimes the way you, you want things to unfold are good but god thinks you know what this is good but i can accomplish far greater so if your prayers are good and they can accomplish this but god wants to manifest this then god's going to say ah that's too low for my glory that's too low uh I went to the uh, I went to the cross for you. I died and rose again. I went through all of that on your behalf and on behalf of the human species. And what you're praying for is this little? Are you kidding me, Rashid? I want to manifest this through your life. So what you're praying here uh, is good. Something wrong with it, but not going to happen. It's far below me and it's far below you as a believer. And that's why, in my case, there were some prayers of mine that God simply left off and said, "No, no, Rashid, this is far better for you." And look at this. I have this online ministry reaching tens of thousands of people worldwide on a continual basis. And I've influenced the lives of I don't know how many people forever for the better. Am I praise myself? No, because it's, it's a ministry that Christ gave to me. I never expected this. I really didn't. I have mentioned before on this channel. But all many of the prayers I had, many of the dreams I had, the Lord redirected me to the one that's working out now. Because the one that works out now manifests this on behalf of Christ. While the ones I want would have manifested this only. So, pray without ceasing because maybe you want to manifest, maybe what you want will, have, will be this and God wants to give you this. So, when you have, so the pagan may have this because they have a paranormal cover, but you're wanting this because you think I'm not greedy. But God wants to give you this so that he is magnified throughout the earth. God wants you to be his tool to magnify himself throughout the whole earth. So God wants you out of your bubble, out of your comfort zone, that you are focused on his glory. And that implies that some of the prayers and the increased declaration you're making have to be brushed away because they're, they're far below you. And God wants you to operate knowing that he is your provider. If you know that he's your provider, that he's the one holding heaven and earth together with his mind, listen, the mind of God holds all of this around you together. All of the physical matter that you see here, man, uh, that has been used to build buildings and all of that. The whole earth, the whole physical realm, including this, the heavens, which are not physical, the heavens, uh, with all their weight and everything in them, everything is held together by God's mind. And here's the thing. If God's mind holds everything together, and he is your provider, then who are you to worry? Who are you to be stressed out? Who are you to become depressed? Who are you to pray for relief? From difficulty if you have the power in you to crush and shut down difficulty once and for always not only do you have the power in you to shut down difficulty you you can replace the difficulty you shut down with continuous joy and continuous glory that will benefit far more people think about uh the five loaves of bread and two fishes okay it was a small lunch box of a uh, little boy. Five loaves of bread and two fishes. And Christ used that to feed around 20,000 people. So thousands were fed by the small lunch packet of that little boy. Okay? That little boy had to hand over what he had, which was little, to Christ. Rely on Christ. And when he received it back from Christ, it was way too much for him to handle. He had to pass it on to others. The same happens to me. And that's why this YouTube channel exists and you're blessed by these videos. Okay? So, the fact that you have these videos are because of God's anointing on my life. And my part was I obeyed the Holy Spirit by letting go. There are times God tells you, let go. That prayer was good. That decree was good. All that was good. But hey, I want great things to manifest through you. Not just small, good stuff. God's not about you, it's about me and my, me being magnified. That's what uh, God is telling you. So, keep on praying, decreeing, declaring. Do not cease praying. Uh, you don't know everything that's going on. You, you don't have all the answers. You're not meant to. God knows all the answers and he is the answer for you. And he will give you an explanation of everything on the right time. Well, that's it for now. Keep on agreeing with Christ, brothers and sisters, and be at peace.